Welcome to UI Testing, Section 6. In this video, we are going to learn how do you record a UI test. There are three main steps. First is to open any of the UI tests.swift file. Second is to move your cursor inside any of those functions, which are already defined, or you can define a new function where you want to record. And third is to click on the record button. It's important to understand what is XCUI application. It's a proxy for your application, which is actually going to create an instance of your application for the purpose of the UI test. You can use the launch command to launch the application, and you can use the descendants or children function to find your targeted elements. Let's have a look at the demo. For the purpose of this demo, we will keep the simulator on the right hand side and keep the Xcode on the left so that you can check what kind of steps are being recorded. Let's move to the UI test file. There are a number of functions which are already there, like setup, tear down. If you read these comments, you will understand what's the role of each of these functions. Let's jump into the test example. We have an instance of the XCUI application already created and an app.launch function used to launch the application. Let's put the cursor on line 30 and on the debug bar, hit the record UI test button. It will launch the application. Once the application is launched, and the data is loaded from the server, tap on the get location button. As you can see, there is a line of code added in the XUI test on the left hand side. And as we added an alert, tap on the OK button now. You are recording the code as you are taking actions on the right hand side. As you see, we added one more step that is app.alerts, which is already added in the XUI test. Let's stop the recording by using the debug bar now and hitting the stop UI test recording button. If you look at the error above, it's quite obvious that we have a duplicate instance of UI application because it is already created above. Let's get rid of this one. Just select this particular duplicate instance of the app and get rid of it. Now let's analyze the code that got recorded. We are trying to access the button by using static text instead of buttons which is actually trying to search for this text get location in our application and then tap on it. It is also doing the same with alerts where it is searching the alert by using the string. And as you may guess, the string would not always be the same since this is a simulated application with a simulated location. We are having Mayfair always, so it may pass the test case. Let's run it again to see if it passes. As you can see, it did not pass as it could not find the alert that we were looking for. Now the reason behind it could be many. In our application, this could be because it takes us time to show the alert because the reverse geocoding takes a bit of time. To make sure that we can wait for such a time, let's add a sleep function and make the application wait for 10 seconds just for testing if it works. And this time while you're waiting, you will see that the application is actually taking a lot of time to load the response and even after you tap the button, it takes a lot of time to reverse geocode and show the alert. And there you go, you have the alert now. But the test case, they still failed. So basically it could not find the descendant matching the type alert on our application. Let's try and simplify this so that we are not actually looking for a constant string and rather simply checking the number of alerts which are inside the application at that particular instance. We're going to use something called XCT assert true. This particular XCT assert true function evaluates the expression inside it and expects it to be true. Let's try app.alerts, which is going to give us an array of alerts inside the application and check the count of it. If the count is greater than zero, we are good to go. Let's try and run the test again. It failed again. Now, this time the error came on line 31 because it simply couldn't find the static text get location. Now, instead of using static text, let's try and use the buttons option in the XCUI application. And again, since we have not added any identifiers yet, let's use the static text string that we have been using till now and call the tap function. Let's run it again. As you can see, this process may require you to get familiar with different options slowly as you run the test case again and again and try to solve the problems. Tap the button automatically using the test 
and right now it's trying the reverse geocode, but the XCT assert true failed. Let's try and increase the time to 15 seconds. That's because if you run the application normally without the UI test and tap on the get location button, you can see that it takes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and it seems like it could take more than 10 seconds, even though I counted a bit fast, but it is a possible scenario. For the purpose of this XE UI test, we can add a sleep function. However, in the real world, you must improve this particular user experience as you cannot simply expect the users to wait for 15 seconds. Now let's run the test again. Now, if you wait for 15 seconds, at least after these 15 seconds, our test case should pass. Fingers crossed. The drum roll. Yeah, we have the alert and the test case passed. Finally. So that's how you make a test case pass, but that's not something you should do very often. By the way, you can also use the descendant function, which gives you a matching attribute where you put the element type like button, and then you can use the first match. Now this particular function gives you the first match of the descendants, which matches the button type. You can store it in a constant called first match button and add a breakpoint to see what exactly comes out of it. Let's run the test case again to see what comes inside the first match button. And now that we get stopped at line 32, let's print the description of first match button and it is the get location button. Just keep in mind that when you use the first match, it may not always return the expected element. In the upcoming videos, we're going to learn how to add identifiers to make sure we get the exact match instead of just a random first match.